another day, another repair job. Next up, it's Barnaby Rudge combined with Hard Times. Hmm. Now, Volume 1 has got a split on the edge of the spine. The cloth's been torn there. I actually teased it out a bit because it was hidden. I thought there was a piece missing, but it's still there. And there's a rather bad split at the top of the spine. End papers need some work. And at the rear, it's just hanging on by a few threads. What I'm going to do is I'm going to split down here so that I can do this repair internally. And as we're now quite familiar with the sort of work that I do in repairing these books, I'm just going to concentrate on this mend and I'll talk through this mend while I tell you something about this novel. Right, let's open it up and see what the damage looks like from the inside. So just a couple of points where the mull is keeping the binding intact, but it's so feeble, it'll be difficult to salvage. You see, that's all it took and it's split right open now. Uh -huh. Okay. The damage is here, and all I need to do is to remove, carefully remove some of the spine lining. I'm not going to take it all off, just see what will come off without too much strain. Two seconds later. Little bits of paper coming off, flecks of paper. This this book's been badly handled. That's all it is. Someone has uh, mistreated it and inadvertently damaged the spine in handling it. And uh, I've got to make that good. Now, Barnaby Rudge. So this was also part of Master Humphrey's Clock, so it followed on from The Old Curiosity Shop. And it was a novel that Dickens had had in mind earlier in his career. I mean, he's still only a young man. He's, uh, he's not yet 30 when he's, uh, when he's starting this novel. In fact, he's about 30. And uh, it was going to be called Gabriel Varden, Locksmith of London. That was the original title. Of course, Gabriel Varden features in the novel, quite prominent figure, uh, but principally remembered as the father of the gorgeous Dolly, Dolly Varden, um, the sexiest of Dickens's heroines. And actually, I think Dickens was more than half in love with her himself. He didn't actually want to relinquish her to Joe Willett at the end. Um, so, yes, it's Dickens's first attempt at historical fiction set during the Gordon Riots in the late 18th century. Other uh, locations in London. Uh, not my favourite Dickens, I have to say. Not by any means. And in some respects, I would, uh, I would put it right right down at the bottom of my least favourite Dickens is. Um, why? Well, partly because I have a sense that he was writing in a great hurry, which of course he was. He was a man in a hurry. And um, there, there, there's evidence of kind of sloppy writing in it, um, which is, um, you know, it's a harsh criticism of Dickens, but he doesn't always keep up entirely with uh, with his own plot, so he loses the way a couple of times, and I think he misses a couple of tricks as well. So um, there's a major theme of a wild man. That's uh, Hugh, the ostler at the Maypole, and uh, and his half brother, but. 
the theme's not properly developed and uh, there's a confrontation towards the end of the novel which I think Dickens really messes up. Um, so, you know, each to their own. Some people absolutely love it. The crowd scenes are very interesting. The, the, the psychology of crowds. Um, so there are some highlights to it for sure but uh, it's not my favorite Dickens that's all I can say um, now this is proving to be quite tricky because the paper doesn't want to come off See, all I've done is I've removed a few flecks of paper from around the wound here and I'm gonna uh, create a piece to just stick over it, a sticking plaster to uh, hide this and heal the wound and it'll work and I think you'll find nothing much will show. All right. Right, that's as far as I'm gonna do now. But what I'm gonna show you is a couple of things about this book which are quite interesting. So, this is volume one of two. Um, now, when I was talking about Pickwick, the first volume in this series, I said that what the publishers did is that they repurposed unsold copies of the library edition because they couldn't they couldn't shift it. Nobody wanted these books without illustration. So you can see here's a frontispiece illustration of the Maypole and here's the title page. Now you won't be able to see this. I'll hold it right up to the camera but you probably still won't be able to see it. Here you can see that the title page has been tipped in on a stub. So they tore out the original title page and put in this single sheet, this one sheet of paper, which is the, what's called a cancel title page. Then you've got the preface, and then you've got the list of illustrations. But interestingly, even though this is the list of illustrations for the entire two volumes, it only goes up to, nothing on the opposite page, facing page, only goes up to page 459, in the fire and uh, smoke, and this is all illustrations to Barnaby Brudge. However, if we turn to volume two, Barnaby Rudge, at the bottom you can see it says hard times. Yeah? So because Barnaby Rudge was slightly shorter, like Old Curiosity Shop, not really a full length novel, uh, they supplemented it with hard times. And there are illustrations to hard times. And like with reprinted pieces, these are by Fred Walker. But the publishers didn't credit these at all on the uh, list of illustrations. So there's no reference to the fact that there are illustrations to Hard Times, nor that they're by Fred Walker. But indeed, they are. The other thing about Volume 2, also tipped in on a stub, date. It says 1862. Uh, in fact, this was issued in 1861. The publishers... Uh, they didn't quite post-date it for 1862, although that was a, a common practice amongst publishers in the 19th century. They thought this would be issued in 1862, but in fact it came out in 1861. And all copies that I've inspected are dated 1861 in Volume 1 and 1862 in Volume 2, even though they were both issued in 1861. And all this information is being made public for the first time in my bibliography, The Collected Dickens. So, copies are still available on A Books. If you want to buy a copy of my bibliography, you'll find out masses of information about this set and about all the other lifetime editions of Dickens' work, much of which has not been known at all until now. And by the way, it just occurs to me, I was talking about the fact that these are all uh, repurposed copies of the library edition of 1858. Um, how many copies? I haven't said very much about this or nothing at all since Pickwick, but this set 
is extremely rare and I've got some figures for this particular volume so there were no new copies printed of Barnaby Rudge in 1861 the only copies that were issued as illustrated library edition volumes were those that were recycled from the earlier library edition without illustrations and we know how many copies there were 750 so there were no more than 750 of these ever starting in 1861 and you can see the condition of these volumes and I've dealt with many many volumes in this series and this is completely typical they fell to pieces they were not fit for purpose okay so they were poorly bound the materials they used were not up to scratch and the copies just fell to pieces so almost every copy that I've handled of the original 1861-62 um, illustrated library edition is in this kind of state or much worse so how many of those original 750 have survived very very few rare books cut a little piece of cloth to size I've put a piece of waste paper underneath to protect the mend that I'm going to glue get my brush I'm gluing onto the the backing here to impregnate this because I've got to make sure that the spine lining is stuck down because I'm going to be sticking this replacement piece onto the paper spine lining as well and I've got to make sure that's stuck down but I'll put a bit of PVA onto this as well and we'll get a good join okay here we go right up to the edge here And that should be enough let's see what it looks like okay tiny little bits of glue have come through and just dab these off with the craft knife open it up again because it's not it's not yet done okay make sure that's secure and leave that for a little while because it's just had an operation and it's a bit fragile right I've made a piece and inserted it at the top of the spine that's just drying now and I'm going to re-glue the front hinge you can see it's badly split all the way along the hinge and I'm just going to put a very thin strip of glue all the way along here and ease these back into place it'll make a significant difference to the appearance of the book and its solidity so we'll keep it together better. It's worth it if you believe that any of this is worth doing, which of course I do because I value these books not, not just for their monetary value, for their historical and cultural value. As I've said, these are extremely rare books. I doubt that there's a hundred 200 of these still in existence. So the text box at the right height in the case, which it wasn't before, it was hanging down a bit too low. 
and having secured that, <coughs> it's made it even. Okay, done the corners, cleaned the head. Oh, yeah, I discovered that all the volumes have got a little bit of writing here saying there's somebody at kind of booksellers mark two volumes and 15 shillings so it looks like all of these volumes were purchased Pro they probably were purchased at the same time but they were sold um, 15 shillings a set which was as I said the original uh, publishers price uh, not clear to me who the original purchaser was so they've all got the same book label in I'll show it to you there we are. It says B. Priestley Bradford. Of course, Bradford is now a major industrial city in Yorkshire, not far from Leeds. Um, I'm not sure that this was the original owner. It has a feel to me of being slightly later. It could be. It could be from the 1860s. I haven't done any research yet to see if I can find out who this B. Priestley was. Um, I'll see if I can. J.B. Priestley, he's a Yorkshire man. I wonder if it's an ancestor of the novelist J.B. Priestley. I'll let you know if I find anything out. Volume 1. Done.